This conference, this conference will now be recorded. All right. All right, call to order for the uh, Planning Commission meeting on Tuesday, April 12th, 2020. Um, Josh, would you please do the roll call? Sure, Mary Benton. Here. Lloyd Colston. Here. Paisley Howerton. Brandon Jellings. Here. Ian Coon. Here. Kyle Lewis. Here. Cody Richardson. Here. Joni Spicer. Here. And Tom Wheatley. Here. At this time, planning commission members are asked to make a declaration of any conflict of interest or any ex parte or outside communications that might influence their ability to hear all sides on any item on the agenda so they might come to a fair decision. Okay. Um, this time, we'll take public comments. First, I wish to address the planning commission regarding items not on the agenda. Speakers will be limited in three minutes. Any presentations for information purpose only, no actions will be taken. We're just, we're just here because we. Okay, that's fine. No public comments. On to the consent agenda. Um, does anybody disagree with the March 8th meeting minutes as shown? Move it, move it. A second. Okay. The meeting minutes are approved. All right, so next is the uh, public hearings. The public hearing considered the advisability of zoning 401 West Madison Avenue from an R2, it's a medium density residential district, to a C2 restricted commercial district. You want to take it from here, Josh? Yeah, you want to have a motion for the opening of the public hearing? So we open for a public hearing. Second. <clears throat> All right, Let's see if I can get my technology working today. Okay, so before you tonight, uh, as the agenda says, it's it's a request to rezone 401 West Madison, just, just across the street from us here tonight, um, from R2 to C2. And there you can see the picture of the property, <coughs> or you can look out the window. Um, the request is filed by AAB Engineering and MKT Investments and the City of Arkansas City. Um, so, combination of all of those. The subject property, of course, is at 401 West Madison. Um, the area around it is comprised of public, industrial, commercial, and residential, a little bit everything in this neighborhood. Um, the water treatment facility that we're in is obviously to the north. Um, there's a former railroad right away at the ADM mill or east of the site, and uh, Daisy Mays is west of the site, of course. The property that we're proposing to rezone is about four acres, and the proposal is to develop a retail store. Uh, <clears throat> there is also an area of the right away, and I have to do with the second public hearing. Um, that's not zoned anything today. And so we'll formally designate that as a C2 district as well in order to fit into that. And, and I'll explain that a little bit. A sale of the property um, to Rupp Helmer Group LLC is contingent upon approval of this request and the vacation request. Uh, the City Commission last Tuesday did approve a contract on a portion of the land, it's kind of complicated. Um, there was a portion that the city owned, there was a portion that the land bank owned, the land bank one was transferred last summer. And there is also that MKT Investments owns this little triangle piece here um, as well. Um, the property was developed as a service station originally. 
Um, and there was a lumber yard and a railroad depot on a portion of this site. I'm not exactly sure where that was in relation to this particular piece, but it was nearby. Um, all the buildings on the entire site had been totally demolished by 2017, and the city purchased the property. I believe the original intention was uh, it had something to do with this facility. Um, that's part of why it got purchased. In 2019, a portion of the property was deeded to the land bank. Um, and like I said, it's actually under contract as well uh, as the land bank approved that last summer. Is these Sometimes these deals take a long time to do. And part of the problem is that railroad right away. Um, they're having some serious difficulties getting clear title on this property. So that's why it's taken so long for them to get to the rezone process. Um, the city will maintain uh, much of the former right away, which will be, uh, oh, I'm sorry. This property here will be maintained by the city um, because that is where the bike trail will go eventually. If we can ever get that started. It should be started um, this fall. But it'll go in closer to the canal, so it shouldn't be affected by this uh, property. Um, no other land use cases were found for this area. Um, as far as compatibility with the comprehensive plan, the future land use portion of the comp plan designates part of this property as commercial. Um, the proposed use is commercial. Um, of course, I, when I say that, is this piece here is not designated for anything because it used to be right away. It was when we did the last comp plan. This project should also help to meet a goal from chapter four, the economic development chapter that we're gonna talk about tonight, um, to target industries and retail enterprises that most likely um, will benefit from the labor force, geography, market characteristics, that sort of thing. The market for this type of business should be fairly good on the south side of town here. Um, because there are not very many businesses of that type in this area. So the zoning ordinance, I don't know how that pushed up so far. Um, the area has public zoning. This facility has some industrial, um, and that's really the ADM mill, and it also has residential. Part of the site that they're, we're dealing with is actually already zoned C2. Um, that was because originally that was the, the, where the service station was, was a separate parcel. Um, so when we did our zoning back in 2014, it was a commercial for that. I think there was a house um, further south. That's probably 608. Is the intent of commercial districts to provide for areas of compatible commercial and service businesses, and the change would be consistent with the intended purposes is regulation. What I always say. Um, here's the subject property. Um, it's looking south along 4th Street. That area is residential. Um, and of course, this is looking north back at where we are right now. Um, so basically, you see that across the street. Um, east on Madison, um, you kind of see a mix. There's some residential off to the left in this image, and then of course ADM is to the right, and the canal and everything's there. Looking to the west, we see Daisy Mays and a couple other restaurants along that stretch, and some housing off of Madison. I believe that would be Fifth Street we're seeing there. <clears throat> So the recommendation of staff is to approve this rezoning. Um, the development appears compatible with the area. It has been vacant since 2017. Some of it's actually longer than that. Uh, the use is similar to the use that was there before um, as a service station. And in fact, it's probably lighter intensity. Than, it is lighter intensity than the lumber area was. Um, it shouldn't necessarily affect the neighboring properties. Um, they will be building a privacy fence along the south 
property line as part of this project. Brings retail services to the South End and the public health safety and general welfare should not be negatively impacted by this. So now before I continue, I received a call yesterday from the, I think it was yesterday, from the applicant. Um, and what it, it has to do with what I talked about earlier with the the difficulties in getting clear title on this property. So what they've requested us to do um, is go ahead and hold the public hearing as much as we can, get comments from anybody, um, but to vote to table um, this action until the May meeting. Um, after that, um, because they will probably be requesting just a little bit more property to the east, a little bit more. This 35 foot section of what used to be Third Street, or well, it was never Rilfer Street, um, they were only going to request a portion of it, and they may need to request a little bit more because they might need to move that building a little bit further to the east. And so it was for that reason that they requested that we not take final action on this tonight, um, but to but to table the action. With that on, open to any questions. Um, yes, me and my brother live down the street, and you said that they wanted maybe some more property on 3rd Street or 4th Street? Um, it's, I say 3rd Street um, because that's, that's what it was originally, but it's it's all north of where 3rd Street is, but it is on the 3rd Street. Does that make any sense at all? Let me, let me scroll back up. So closer to the middle. Closer yeah. to the middle, okay. Oh, yes. Let me see. So it's more, um over in here okay so there's there's not a street there we have to call it third street because that's <laughs> what we're going yeah okay it's like 35 feet right that's that's what the original request was for the, uh, here it's that orange highlighted area but who owns that now the retail center yeah they're requesting it from the from the city, city. That that whole property there is city city property. It was it was originally railroad, but when the railroad um, uh, took up the trucks in that area, they turned it over to the city. Does the city want to give them a minimum, or what they want us to give them as much? As Part of the issue, if and I I need to talk to our city engineer about this. We don't want to get too far over because it might affect the hike trail. And there's some talk of doing something else um, with this property as well. It's city, city related. Um, something it's related to this facility is what it'll be. Uh, but other than that, I'd be probably go the entire third street right the whole time. Less for the city to deal with the news at all. So, is this your neighborhood, man? Yes. Okay. How close are you to this area? Uh, we're just right on the other side of the corner on the first block. Okay. Would that be south then? Yeah, it'd be south. Yes. Could, could I get your address? Just 626 South Ford. What was your name? Uh, the house belonged to my brother, Ricky Johnston. Okay. Is your house all this back here? No. Huh? But it's it, not. It'd be right here. Yeah, that's it right there. <clears throat> you have any issues? Uh, no, we were just kind of curious uh, what might be going in and how soon. Yeah. Can you tell us what's going in, John? I have not at liberty to say the actual business that's going in. I was hoping that our applicant would be here this evening to reveal that. Oh, okay. It is a retail store. Um, 
That, that's about all you think. <laughs> okay. Can we start guessing? You can start guessing, I guess. I can tell you now. But yeah, I think they've asked us not to reveal that part of it. Is, it is, it's a complicated part of the development process. If that's revealed too early, they get nervous. And so it's part of my job to hold that kind of information back. It will be a retail store. And uh, it's, I'll put it this way, it's one you're familiar with. It's not anything bizarre. <laughs> So, why can't you tell us what the store is? This is the reason to violate any kind of laws. Dave just asked that. Make confidential. See, one of the things that, as you're developing like this, if word gets out here into the store and they can't get their easement cleared, then suddenly the store to be all over like Burger King. People are still busting Burger King sign up. Yep. And you don't want to develop too much. And at that meeting, if you remember, the applicant actually revealed that it was Burger The applicant revealed what? That it was Burger on that very zone. Oh, and so that's why the public all knew exactly what it was at that point. So it was okay. I, I, I just was concerned about um, that, that might affect the decision. I would have pulled out. Are they asking for any kind of tax incentives? I don't know saying not the immediately the commission meeting they want they want to find your opinion. Well they'll get the uh they're eligible for like an RP at the very least. What about utilities? Are they asking for I have not heard anything like that. In fact, um, as part of this site, they will have to, this, this drainage ditch here, they will actually have to cover it, um, at least for their part of the property, and they will put a pipe in for it. That's at their expense. So they're, they're planning to do that. They, the other utilities they've already talked to, and, and those will be relocated. I think the sewer has to also be moved back. Again, they agreed to do that. So, should, should have a You recommend we table this until we have more information? Yes. When we close the public meeting. Okay. Public hearing is closed. It's full. Table for an hour. I'll second that. Fortunately, that means that next month is going to be a very busy meeting. I already have two other public areas at that meeting, but can't move forward if they're not one. <laughs> but I wanted to go ahead and do the public hearing so that. Um, citizens had a chance to voice their opinion. You are more than welcome to join us again next month if you desire. Uh, uh, we might just do that because we have an idea of what might be going in, but no. and we promise we wouldn't say a thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, is it a uh, to go? When they build the oh. building, be starting at this corner going east. The, the building, but the building as proposed, and I'll just and it's going to change probably a little bit. <laughs> but I'm just trying to. That's all right. I didn't bring that back up because it's at the it's in this proposal. This this is the alley. The canal is roughly right in here. Okay. And so this building is all east of. Alley, if you can call it an alley. It, it's where the canal's at, it's east from that, right? Okay. 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 I was just wondering because I was going to ask you about the, how they're going to cover that canal out. <laughs> okay. 
They're not going to be needing any more houses on that block, are they? Oh, no. oh. not for this project. That in fact, this down here is that first house that's left, and it's not going anywhere. Oh, now it's I understand it's from the canal east to that other canal. Oh, yeah, that way. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? So, as you might guess, this is going to be the same scenario on the vacation request because they need to. Why is that not the thing? They need to also um, table. There we go. Table have us table this one, but I'm going to go ahead and go through the public hearing portion of this. Um, so we get that out of the way. Um, we go into public hearing. I'll second it. Okay. So the vacation request um, is basically the same general area. Um, on this map, it's those areas in orange. It's the alley that um, is on the property that they're wanting to get hold of. And it's 35 feet of the, uh, what's, you, what's supposed to be Third Street. So just put that one. Was that ever a street? Yeah, I think so. And I think the it was planted that way for some reason, um, but it was planted in 1886. <laughs> so that was probably before the railroad even came through. I don't know. Um, I don't know why that says Brandon Jellings on there. <laughs> Brandon is not requesting this. That was the. <laughs> Um, last one. That was in the last one. So originally that was supposed to be 10th Street, um, but at some point in the past, the city redid all of those names of those streets. Um, as far as this one's concerned, um, the applicant or the city, um, it's, it's on a contract for that thing. Uh, owns or controls all of the land that will surround this proposed vacation. So all of it would go to them eventually. The technical advisory committee uh, noted that there are a number of utilities present um, and that the utility easement along the alley should be retained and we'll make that happen when we do the business. Uh, but like I said, most of those are going to go away, except for the uh, farm sewer, which will still remain. So there will still be a utility. So we'll still need to retain that. As far as the third street portion, we won't need an easement there because well, there's nothing there. So we can totally release that to them. Um, the area, again, was platted in 1886. At some way, at some point, the railroad took over that street, like I said. Um, but it since has been vacated to the city. The alley in this block was only partially completed due to the open canal running its length. Of course, there is a partial alley there anyways, up to all those houses along there. Not much of an alley, but it, it does exist. Um, for this particular case, it is, I kind of notified people of both cases at the same time, so we're we notified everybody that was in the rezone area um, as well. So we, we got the notice out for everybody that would be affected by that as well. The only thing um, that I noted, I had a citizen call me, I believe they lived at, or have owned the property at 618 South Forth that had some concerns about accessing their garage from the north. Um, but they can still access the garage from the south. Um, and there's never been an alley, at least 
forever there. Uh, I can cry. There's never been anything there. Uh, they weren't ultimately really concerned about it, but if it comes to it, uh, the city will work with the developer to see that they can self access it if it needs to be a gate or something. The property line seems awfully close. I realize we're looking at the satellite map, but it seems awfully close to, to the structure. Yeah, and partially to your point, it, it's a little misleading <laughs> on here, but it's probably within 10 feet of the property. And then, like I said before, with the rezone public hearing, there will be a double privacy fence on that property line for them. So they won't have to, they won't have to pull it, in other words. And the same thing with this other property that's around the corner on Monroe. So here's the the property. Um, basically, the same thing we just dealt with, but the rezone. The building is, like I said, is roughly in here. That's where it would be. So they're going to have to do some serious grading through there um, because the where the railroad went through the the front tire, which just Obviously, how the railroad works. Um, so they're going to have to do some leveling um, through that, and they'll have to be careful with drainage. And that sort of thing. Um, this is actually a portion of the flat. I thought it would just be neat to actually see um, what it looked like. And again, at that time, it was it was called Tenth Street, um, and Madison was First Avenue. If you've ever wondered why Fifth Avenue in downtown is called Fifth Avenue, it's because it was part of that uh, numbering system that started with Madison being first. It's the Fifth Street North of there. I don't know why the city never changed the name of Fifth Avenue. I guess they just thought it was cool that Fifth Avenue town, but I just thought that was kind of a neat thing that, that explains why that street's called Fifth Avenue. Um, Staff recommends approval um, subject to those utilities. Um, and of course, I have to tell you too that this one we should also table uh, because they're, they may re be requesting additional uh, right away be vacated. And I can, uh, Kyle, our Cody, which terrible person said that, um, look into seeing if they'll just take that entire strip the plan as opposed to just this weird little portion of it. <laughs> if they need more land. So we can ask them what they want to do. The city is prepared to basically sell this whole property for a dollar anyway, so it's not going to change much. We did sell the land bank property to them, which is the, this property here. It's it's still under the city's name, but it's it's a under contract. All I Comments, discussion, look at the issues. I have a question on that property that's adjacent from Daisy May's parking lot, east to the east. Mm -hmm. um, if you're talking about the city selling it for a dollar, should that be offered to the owner of Daisy Mays prior to the person that's planning to establish a business further east? Actually, actually that is the property that was in the land bank, and that is what we actually are selling. I think it was $90, $200 or something like that. Oh, sorry, approved. Yeah, that, and that one's already been approved. Um, <laughs> I have talked to uh, Dixie McGuire of Daisy Mays about this project because she was actually interested in taking the property um, to right. turn it into a parking lot. But right. that had already happened when she approached us. I see. Thank you. Mm -hmm. There are no other comments on what we close public hearing. 
Second. Games are closed today. So we can take a list. I'll second it. Oh, we're ready to talk about the comprehensive plan. Go down here. So, last month we discussed at length housing. And so, what I did, oh, let me pass this up before I continue. So what I did was I um, updated a couple sections at the end of chapter three. And so that's why I'm, I printed off a new copy and then I'll talk about it in a second. Um, what changes I made and how I did the goals. Okay. And this is both chapter three and chapter four. Copies. Oh, oh, from last week. Yeah, the last week. Thank you. Over. Thank you. Actually, there's some changes in here. Okay. Oh, chapter three. I don't want to go back over everything because we already did that. Um, the first several sections of that chapter, you probably won't. See any changes? I don't think I changed much of anything in introduction or vision or background because we already pretty much had that um, done. Housing data from the census um, was also in there. Uh, I think the only thing here that changed was a date or something. Talk about that. Oh, I think this may be new. Okay, well, it's not new. Oh, maybe not. I, I nicely these up and made charts that show the survey results from uh, the housing survey that was conducted last summer, I think it was. I can't know if that was in the version from last month or not. Um, I think most of this was. So one of the things I focused on was accomplishment. We, at the last meeting, we talked about what the accomplishments had been since 2014. And I believe somebody mentioned a couple things that weren't in there and I got those put in there. We, we talked about the, the housing studies that have been done, the moderate income housing grant that's being used that for Compass Point. <coughs> um, after we established that land bank program, uh, which we've used several times for housing projects, Habitat for Humanity loves that land bank program because that's how they get their land now. Uh, we're probably going to be continuing to use the land bank, uh, or use the uh, tax sale to acquire more properties for the land bank. The land bank fund has some funds in it, so we shouldn't have to use uh, regular city funds to purchase those properties. So that'd be a good way to get some more of those properties that are distressed or the property, the house can be torn down and we'll put it in there so we can redevelop it. Uh, 
Lakeview Estates was, was added at that time. Uh, they use low income housing tax credits. Uh, we did the housing assessment tool last year, and I'm sure you all remember that, but we did get that grant as we talked about. And then uh, it talks about the code enforcement program that we have that deals with housing, um, the different codes that we use. So, so I believe that we covered everything that we've done. Unless somebody has something else. <clears throat> So after I did that section and we had our meeting last month, we talked about how to deal with goals and how to make them measurable. And we all came up with a pretty good list of goals. And so what I did is I kind of reworded this section and kind of worked off of your comments, your feedback from the last meeting and came up with a chart and the way this is supposed to work is on this chart the the, the items in bold are a goal that we're trying to meet as a city and some of these are kind of what was left from the 13 plan and then what i did under that was uh, list some goals that would help us to meet or at least not actually sorry that would help us to meet that goal. So in the case of encouraging availability of housing for all ages and income groups, um, we talked about senior housing, we talked about reinvesting in current existing homes, um, talked about removing the updated housing where appropriate, establish more rural housing incentive districts, and continue the NRP tax rebate program. Um, for housing, I believe that every one of these needs to be a short term action. So we need to accomplish everything on this list in the next, what did I say, next five years. And I think that's pretty reasonable for all of them. Some of them are already doing. Um, some of them are uh, ongoing things like obviously continuing the use of NRP is just an ongoing thing, so we don't have to do anything. Um, some things that we'll need to do, uh, we talked at length about our fees for build for housing builders, talked about waiving, continuing to waive fees based on the volume of the housing units proposed. Um, we have something kind of in place for that, but it was kind of a stopgap measure. Um, and it expires, I think, after two years. So we may want to, what, what, what the purpose of this goal was, was, or this action was, was to make that permanent uh, and come up with a, a standard way for determining when fees should be made or if there needs to be any fees at all. So that's that's something the city we're recommending with this plan. The city conduct a study of their fees and figure out um, how to make that work. And it may just be a modification of what we're doing today. The way we're doing it today is if you build a certain number of units, you either get 50% um, of the fees reduced or 100%. I forget what the threshold was. Um, in the case of Compass Point, that has enough units that we waive all the fees, all the permanent fees for that to help it go forward. So we, we have something in place, but I think we need to make it a little more permanent and have a little bit more of a reason about why we're doing it. Um, and that last goal just talks about uh, removal or rehabilitation. So using grants to remove the structures, use the land bank to forgive demolition costs we didn't really talk about that last month but it's something i've talked about um, as ways to get a hold of this land so we can turn it back over to a responsible owner um, i also added this one because i thought it made sense waive fees for demolition of, of um, dangerous structures uh, as part of the process of of doing their fee structure. Um, waive the bill fees if they turn away. Definitely would in that case. 
Usually what happens when somebody turns it over to the land bank is the city just does the demo, or then we take it, uh, we do the demolition, and then we keep track of those costs. The idea being that when the property is sold through the land bank, that we can uh, recoup some of those costs. Of it. Now those are because the city did it, those are direct costs. Um, so we we're not paying the contractor to do it. But, but you can, if you want to waive the demolition fees, and they still be taking the land as well. Is that, is that what you mean? Yeah. So what's the incentive for them to turn the land over to the land bank? They, that way they do not have to demolish the house. That way they what? They, they don't, they're not responsible for demolishing the house. We are. So that's... That's what the way we would have worked that in the past was that's our way of paying for the property. Instead of handing them cash, we are demolishing the structure for them so they can have it. My question is okay, you have in here way fees for demolition. Well, what does that apply? Well, in the, in the case that we're talking about, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be any fees. I understand. Maybe that one didn't need to be in there. I just wanted to clarify. I'm not disagreeing with you. Just How does that work? If you have a say garage that is falling in on itself, if they give you a notice that it needs to be fixed up, you never fix it. What happens? After that? Um, in order for the city to tear it down without that transfer that I'm talking about. The city commission has to hold a public hearing. And at the end of the public hearing, they vote whether or not to declare the structure to be dangerous. And once it has that designation, it actually gets recorded as basically a lien on the property. And then the city uh, can demolish it ourselves or whatever the case may be. And if they don't transfer the property, then the they get billed for the cost, or it goes on special assessments on property. So, is there any other stipulations on the city paying for the demo? Such as you need to build the property or build on it or something? Well, in, in the case of that, they have to turn the property over. If, they're, if we are going to pay for it, not charge them anything. Is that, is that what you're asking? Um, yeah, basically. Yeah, in that case, if they're turning the property over to the land bank, then they have no further responsibility. Okay, but what if they don't turn it over? Then they're still responsible for the cost of the devil. But you have way fees for devilage. That's what I was trying to clarify. Sure. Now, in, in the case of them doing it themselves or taking care of it themselves, that's when the fee would apply. And so my suggestion was to not charge that fee in order to encourage them to take care of it themselves. But you're right, if we're going to waive the fees, maybe this is what you're trying to get at. If we're going to waive the fees, then they should have to read it. Yes, that was my point. Gotcha. Because I understand what you're saying. <laughs> and I agree that if, if we were to wait for you, then something needs to happen. Yeah, is that a turn mm -hmm. Or we charge them a fee and they just do whatever they want. Yeah, there'd be some instruction and a lot of things go on that. Say I have a garage that's starting to look bad. I decide I don't really want this here. Do I apply to just hey city, will you tear this down for me? I'd rather have a dog fence. Then is that do they because look that in case that's probably not going to work because unless there's nothing else on the property. Uh, but yeah, if you're you're just wanting the city to tear down the structure for you, <laughs> how do you how do you uh, waive the fee and let them keep the property without having them bring us? Tear down mine. I don't mind going. You didn't charge them a dollar. No, I agree. You would have to have some sort of, 
And the same thing with the, the fee structure we have right now with waiving fees for new housing. There, you, there's a, it's written into the policy that you have to have the houses built within X amount of time. Yeah. Or we're going to charge you the fee. Yeah. So, so, waiving fees. Yeah. So there's going to have to be conditions on that. Same thing with, with forgiving it for housing. So this waive fees for them, that's not a permit fee? No, that's what I was trying to Yeah, that's what I was saying. Oh, just the permit. It's a permit fee, but okay. it's not no, the demolition cost. No, right, right, right. no that's permit. exactly what I'm trying to say. Oh, Sorry. Um, <laughs> I was thinking they hold them. No, no, just, just the permits. And I can clarify that. We'll put that on there. Because it does just say fees. So yeah, permit. I gotcha. We can, I can change that. So any other comments on oh, I just want um this came from the Art City Work Plan retreat retreat from by WSU's public policy management center. And all the department heads were there, including all the commissioners, and they were pretty attentive what's going on. They listed some strengths and weaknesses. Of course, they touched on housing quite a bit. And if you think it's a problem now, it's going to really reach crisis proportion because Creekstone has vowed to be the largest packing house in the country, much more expansion. So, well, what that's worth on housing. That's what I heard. Out of two thirds of it in that coming here. Uh, some other notes to pass on, just some general stuff so you guys are aware. What they're thinking as we flush out chapter four here. Okay. With that being said, um, let's move on to economic development. Uh, and We've discussed this topic before. Um, what what I'm trying to get out of you, just like what we did last month, is to help me make sure that the changes I've made are what you're looking for, uh, and also set the goals for economic development. And just like Alvin, I have kind of fleshed out some of the goals we talked about at that last meeting. That's okay. So I'm going to go through this real quick. Um, the changes I made: introduction, revision, to make any changes. For background, um, I did update some information in this section about the industrial parks. Uh, just some of it was bad information, and some of it uh, just needed to be updated. And. Oh, and I added like since since this plan was done, came back to put the workhouse up. So I had to add it to it uh, for the golf industrial park. And then um, the, the next section we talked about incentives. I really didn't touch that. Most of those programs are still valid. Uh, the different tax incentives, the abatements, the tips, all of that stuff is still. I'm sure there's you know, be something on there. It's not right anymore, but I think I believe all those programs are still valid and it's stuff that businesses can use in order to uh, develop. And then what I did um, on the next page on 4-4, I updated the employers table to show uh, our major employers and the, this table, it didn't, it didn't have this in the old plan, this shows employment number changes over time. And so you can kind of see um, where the growth was, where the contraction of labor was. Um, of course, Creekstone is that big change. Like 2013 was at, well, actually 2003 was at 620. And now in 2021, they were all the way up to 1180. And growing, uh, just as, as Tom was saying, that, that's a never ending thing. Um, they've told us about hundreds of millions of dollars of more work that will be conducted out there to continue to expand that plant. 
And this is why housing and economic development have to go hand in hand so much because if we're going to get any more employees out there, they got to have place to live. Um, and that's probably one of our biggest hurdles to economic development today is not having enough housing for people that are systems already busting in, as you heard several times. Um, I think they have four buses now that they are bringing employees in from Park City and from Wichita. Um, so we need to use our housing programs in order to fix that problem because we kind of want those people to live in our community because if they're here, they're more they're going to be shopping here, they're going to be um, they're going to be paying taxes here. Uh, so it's important that we have a place for them to stay. I, I thought it was good to put that table in there. I believe I got that from uh, from Carrie Galetti before she left us. Um, the next thing I did was I updated that sales tax table. Um, got some information, some updated information from KDOR and from the city. And it kind of shows um, where our taxable sales have been going over the past uh, 11 years or so according to this chart um, looks like it's increased nearly 30 million dollars which is good positive um, the collections of course vary because the tax rate varied over that period um, but the neat thing about this chart is you can see where how much the city is generating from sales tax over the years it, as low as 2.3 million in 2015. Um, looks like there's a 3.7 and 17. And the most recent one that we have numbers were of 21, uh, where we generated $3.4 million in health tax collections. So it's a good source of revenue for the city. Um, some of that, as you know, sales tax, we have sales tax for a hospital that's funding that debt it was voted on several years ago. Um, we also have, I believe it's 1% for police and fire. So I think there's one, oh, I hope this is right, 1% for police and fire and 1% and for the hospital. And so that's, we guarantee the debt. That. So the other interesting thing, the state put out a city trade poll they do this every year and it's kind of interesting because it shows you how much of retail trade that the city is keeping and the idea is to have a score of 1.0 or greater um, the most recent one for our city was 0.93 so we're we're not retaining everything but we're pretty close it's not too terrible and then um, the state also does an additional uh, calculation called income adjusted pull factor. And obviously our income here in Alley County in our city is a little bit lower than other parts of the state. And so what they try to do is normalize that. And when you normalize it, that factor is actually 1.33. So we're actually doing a little bit better than than what that 0.93 would suggest. Oh, well, I guess I should read this. A factor of 1.0 shows that for every dollar a city resident spends outside the city, a non-resident spends a dollar at a local retail business. So if it's more than one, that means that we are uh, generating some additional income from non-city residents, which is a good thing. Um, because that means that people outside the city are helping us pay for some of our projects. Obviously, people in rural Cali County use our hospital. Uh, for instance, we've done sales tax in the past for streets. We don't have money, but people that don't live in the city with us still use the streets. So it's a, it's a good way for us to get a little bit revenue from that. Um, it also talks about the trade, of course, this is all technical, um, the trade area capture, like how many people were actually getting 
to come into our treatment room, which is less than our population. So I'm not quite sure I understand where that number comes from. Um, but it, it, it says 10,000 at that time. It also, another little tidbit is that Arc City captured 44.1% of the Cali County retail trade over the over that period of work. So I'm, I didn't look at Winfield, but I'm sure they're about the same. And then the rest of the sales tax is coming from the other communities in the county. So it's that actually does make sense that it's not more than 50% of our cities because Dexter, Cambridge, and Atlanta, and Burden, and Dude all have sales tax collection or all have retail too. So. Hmm. A lot, maybe that's that. So the next thing I updated the table, um, which is kind of just a census table that talks about the occupations are available in our city. This is based off the American Community Survey um, five year estimates for 2010, 2015, 2019. The 2020 data is actually available now, but I <laughs> Uh, but the, the neat thing I like about this chart is it tells you what our civilian labor force is. So we're right in the kind of 5,000 range of total uh, employment in our city. And then further down, you see the population that's 16 and over is about 9,000. So potentially 9,000 people could work. but that number obviously includes retirees and, and people that cannot work for whatever reason. So that's not necessarily going to reflect on the unemployment percentage because retirees don't are kind of um, also updated the income table. Let's just say about that. Um, the only interesting thing there is the mean the median income has increased from For a house, for a family, well, <laughs> the census does this thing with households, and then it does a thing with families. So oh, that's not the same thing. It sounds weird, um, but a household can have more than one family. That's why those are treated. But you can see the increase, which makes sense. Obviously, we have natural increase in our wages because. Um, the next chart is about poverty, and that, that was in there last one too. Um, kind of a measure of what our poverty rate is in the county or in the city, right? Um, and according to this survey, our poverty rate is decreasing, um, which is good. Uh, I, can't necessarily point to a specific factor that would do that, other than places like Creekstone have been uh, really raising their wages quite a bit. Uh, mostly, and it's probably even lower than this because this is pre pandemic. Uh, so, if for those people that are employed in those industries, the, the numbers have gone up a lot since, since the pandemic. So, because, quite frankly, it just states that there's a lot of competition. Creekstone has a lot of competition for local needs. But basically, income is the biggest driver of the local economy. That's why you put all that stuff in there. Yeah, it's a bunch of charts, it's a bunch of information. Um, but it's important to look at those uh, charts because that's how we determine the health of our economy. Um, and like I said, there's been a rising trend for the city, um, which is a reduced poverty rate. Uh, interestingly enough, if you look at that chart, though, for people that are over 65, the poverty rate is actually increased. I don't know, maybe that has to do with Social Security not getting the proper adjustments. I don't know exactly what that is. Um, but we, we do have a little bit more of a problem with our seniors uh, being in poverty. 
important. That's also related to age-related cost of living increases. Yes, I would agree. Okay. We're out of time that we as a city can do about that because that funding comes from the federal government. Yes. Um, and Medicare, of course, is one other cost that comes from the federal government. Too. So we can't we can't do a whole lot to affect that sector, but what we can do is the other age brackets. We can help to find um, high wage industry, which we're fortunately pretty good right now because we are very fortunate to have um, some pretty high paying industries for our area. I did know that here that senior housing can help with that to an extent, especially if it's subsidized. Um, that may something we can do a little bit. So the next section there I deleted um, because it was from old plans and what seemed to be happening, and this was part of our discussion before, was that. We had a whole bunch of goals that we just kept recycling, never actually meeting. And part of it was the way they were written. Um, so I just removed that whole section. Uh, obviously, you can't see what I removed on this particular report, um, but it basically was just summarizing some of the past plan, going all the way back to, I think, all the way back to 1996. So it was just coming out of date, and so I just flat removed it. Um, I did leave in this 2020 community plan, and I left in the 2010 survey that Cali first did, um, and I left in the 2013 survey. This is one of those areas where we need to do survey on before we can finalize this chapter. I'm working on, we, we talked about flash vote before, we let that lapse, the city did, and I was trying to get funding to re-up that so I can get some new surveys added. We may not use flash vote, we may use another survey method. I don't know, I've got to talk to the city manager some more about what we can be fun. Um, but we're going to do a little bit more surveying in this area that's a little more up to date. And in the area of economic development, I think we need some post pandemic. Or, I guess we're still technically in. But we need some pandemic related um, responses for economic development. I, I think that's important. So, what I will do is if we don't end up using flash vote, I will probably look at some of these questions that were asked in 2013 and tweak them a little bit so that we can get some good information from our citizens about what they want to see. Um, and there should be questions in there about is it okay for the city to subsidize economic process? Is, can we use tax money to do that? So that's the kind of question we, we want to ask the citizens. Um, we want to make sure that's okay. Uh, and if it is okay, how much how much is it going to cost? We we asked them questions on some of those slash growth surveys. If you had hundred dollars to spend, how would you do it? Um, I have to look back at that because it was a budget thing. But I think there was a quite one of the options was like, no. so we can pull that survey into and I probably should have put that in. But anyway, we have some information from surveys from citizens over the years um, that I think is important to kind of keep in here. We if we get some good information, <laughs> we can look at potentially removing some of the older stuff again, uh, just because how much survey information do you want in this plan? That's older. I I do think we need to do some more things, and I'll be. Oh, I guess that I have made a note too. Um, there was comments, written comments that people made on the 2013 survey, and I would like to get 
or those that are more up to date that talks about it. Um, there's some good stuff in here. Uh, at that time, they were talking about needing more manufacturing, but I think we've, we've kind of gotten some of that since then. Uh, I actually kind of like this comment that somebody made. If the city is doing a good job maintaining services, economic development will happen. I think that's probably an argument against using um, taxpayer money in order to help with that. But it's it's a it's an interesting take. Right? And there's there's truth to that. It's, if we're making making sure our our utilities are adequate for economic development, for instance, it would be easy for economic development to happen. Um, and of course, if we maintain our police and fires and they Protected. Uh, uh, I just thought there was good stuff. We also I put in the accomplishments section to this as I tend to do as we discuss um, on every time. Because if we don't know where we were or what we've what we've done since last plan, how do we know if we're actually meeting our um, so I intended to put that in each section. <laughs> Economic development, uh, when I was trying to think of what all we've done in the past uh, nine years, I struggled a little bit more than I know it has. Um, mostly because we haven't done a lot that's, um, like we haven't done a lot of grants that are related to economic development. A lot of the economic development grants are not necessarily through the city, they're individuals. Um, there's been some talk about some CDBG funding that can be used for economic development. Um, let me put that in here. Um, the county received um, money from the CARES Act related to COVID. Um, and there were several businesses in the county that were able to receive some of those dollars um, from the CARES Act. That that was given out. I, I need to check with Cali first on how much that was, so I put something in here. Um, so we that's not a city. Obviously. That, that was actually fully managed by the county. Um, but there was some funding that some businesses with a lot of money, but some businesses were able to get funding that was directly related to income that was lost related to that. So probably some payroll money, for instance, was probably part of that. And maybe I would have to get with Ashley uh, on that. And Cali First is kind of in a flux right now because Terry Filetti, as you might know, left uh, there. And I believe last I heard Ashlyn Hallmeyer, who's the administrative assistant, was taking over. Um, but I don't know if that's finalized. But though they're still working, there's um, there's a board that's related to Cali First, I believe, with city managers on that, and a couple of our city commissioners are part of that. So it's not going away. We, we will continue to have this. It's just there at home. A little bit of a transition. Um, so, any questions about any of that? Fire a little bit there. Anything that you feel that needed to be in here? There's some updates ahead regards to goals and actions. Um, based on what I just heard, uh, the city. Um, commissioners, they were focusing on um, some downtown development and the Burford Theater is a gold star. 14 years, seven and a half million dollar renovation, private funds, and they'd like to see more refurbishment along there. There's a developer's bought two downtown properties. Um, who and what's a big secret? You guys have a lot of secrets. More than an army. No, sorry. <laughs> I tried to find out, but um, Another thing that was alarming to me when I was doing some research for February for the focus group, I had about 40 people on each table, it was like eight people, and everyone had different goals and priorities for what downtown should be. 
they're looking at is the hub of the community. Um, one thing was last week, the Main Street community uh, did not accept Mark today. Pump and Winfield are members. That's too bad because my thing is not to leave any money on the table. I mean, I want to see sales tax go up on visitors, not the residents. So get a break on property tax, you know, they can pay. But um, they said there wasn't enough for local interest to be accepted in Main Street. I can sort of address that. Um, part of the issue with that, and they get a whole lot of guidance. Um, they, I, I think what happened was we didn't have enough time to truly develop it. We started that process last, the end of the summer, I think it was. And so they, they went out and they did solicit um, pledges um, from businesses, but they did of them. Uh, so what Main Street is going to do, and Paisley is not on our, in our meeting today, uh, but what she is going to be doing is focusing on continuing to get those pledges. And actually the Arc City Main Street is an organization. It's just not officially recognized by the, the national program or the state program. And so they are going to start doing um, some different things, it's probably some fundraisers in order to build up that a little bit more too. Um, one of the things that we talked about at some recent meetings were uh, providing grants for signage um, for some of these downtown businesses, uh, fixing their awnings. So little, little things to dress up the business a little bit. And that's kind of what Main Street about is, is making, uh, the downtown area more inviting. Uh, uh, there's a big visual aspect to that organization. Well, it's too bad because uh, T-Mobile two weeks ago gave, picked out 50 Main Street cities and gave 50 grand each. Honka got one for their ice train. Now that's my left on the table, mm -hmm. but I said, but um, the only other thing I want to touch on, this is more the private sector. I was in, Topeka last week. And here to pass these out is Kansas official travel guide. It is the Bible for tourism in Kansas. Comes out every year. Um, and um, this is first contact people have coming through the state, mostly I-70, I-35. That's all the major hotels. And uh, going through there, um, the only thing in Arc City, not to point any fingers, is uh, just the address of the Convention Bureau on Summit. All these other towns list things that they do. <clears throat> Winfield has their Isle of Lights in here, about eight or nine items. And Arc City has nothing. And there's last year's copy. We didn't even get an address at that place last year. There's nothing. So I just want those to stimulate some ideas as we continue on to this. Chapter four. And, uh, I mean, there's some great things. I mean, there's some historic stuff here. Just to look at, just briefly, you guys know, that's a dollar out here. It's not just another Indian village. And it, uh, I'm big in history. It is a huge city that they came together with, not to war with each other, to do some trade. It's like putting uh, today, like dropping Chicago at the river. And I mean, that's, we talk about federal funds, visitor convention bureau. That could be explosive. Uh, put some kind of old record thing in there. I mean, it's uh, anything that promoted that. And uh, I mean, to talk to BNSF to put in type of railroad interactive science center here, like the center of the country. There's a lot of railroad enthusiasts. There's some things we can capture, some great buildings down here. You know, um, you know, I lived in Manhattan. It, 10 years, Topeka 10 years respectively. I never heard of the law. I drove my bike all over the state, why not? Well, it was in this thing, and then it's the one I heard it. But, um, it was just uh, kind of frustrating because it wasn't a common goal we talked about. Some people wanted to expand, some people wanted to keep the small town charm. I'm kind of middle, I want the small town with Refurbishment, I mean, we've got way more amenities in Winfield. 
it's a Tippecanoe County seat. A few more people, you know, a lot more press on things. Um, the um, the simplest thing. You guys have heard of Gawker City, the biggest ball of twine, I guess, in the country. Is there twine? Yeah, less than 500 people. It's in Mitchell County, about an hour north of I said. I went there by accident because a wedding close by like 20 years ago. And I was like, you're kidding me, this is a thing. And I thought it, it's like 12 feet high, 20,000 pounds. And every summer they have a little festival and they wrap twine about it to the core, it's all twine and string. And out of nothing, this guy started in the 50s, right? You know, it's like the pet rock just out of nothing. And it's still there. Yeah. I mean, and they get people to drive an hour north to take their picture with it. There's postcards, they got a little gazebo thing. I'm like, we could do a few things like that. I mean, it's a little ridiculous, but uh, that's just an example. I mean, so I know there's a lot of experience here. Stimulate some minds, maybe we could think of something with uh, the city similar to one of other commercial things. I didn't do that. Though. Well, and that, honestly, that is. In, in the goals that I put on here, there is nothing directly related to tourism. So I would argue that we probably need um, to have a focus because tourism is, is an industry. Uh, and maybe we need to find a way to work with the Zurich City to, well, for one thing, get in here. <laughs> Make sure that we are talking about uh, what we're doing. and. And we talked about cell tax earlier. If you get people to visit the community or the fall of trying to work city, use this example, um, they tend to spend money here. And it means more cell tax. And, and for that matter, more business support too. Helps, helps our community. So, so I think that, that we do need to have something in here about uh, I'm not sure that in general. Well, it's kind of, you know, not negative, but it's kind of funny. A friend of mine, a lawyer out of state, he says, okay, where are you at? Arkansas? No, it's uh, Arkansas City. Well, it says Arkansas City. Yeah, well, they don't say that. They don't even say that anymore. They say Arkansas City. So he said, you got an identity problem. You need one name to go from there. So I don't think it's just, you know, trick to that. But, um, Kind of the little things, I guess, we start with. That's actually something that the Main Street Committee wants to look at, too. Mm -hmm. Is and it's exactly what it is. We, we don't have that really strong identity, like I will say, Patrick said, the Salt City. Mm -hmm. So they can use that as a branding opportunity. Well, we we talked a little bit about uh, land recognition. They thought, wait a minute. With, with our um, the way our society is working now, if you remember that what happened in the land rush is that we took over in the Atlanta. <laughs> so we don't want to focus on that. I think well, it is part of our identity. Referring to the name itself. Well, yes. So but I mean, beyond that, it's a brand new self that attempts to make yeah. sure so, And I think that we need to change the name of the city. It's been yeah. changed before, Wanda. Change the name of the city, call it Art City, and build over here. And it can be a tourist attraction, but somebody back east has already done that. Except they didn't change the name of the city. <laughs> well, if you remember, Topeka changed their name to Google for a couple of days one time because they were trying to get Google that. That was what it was. All right. But it was interesting, and it got people to talk. <laughs> And it didn't work. No. Yes. <laughs> you should definitely look at adding tourism. Well, and like the first goal that I, I put down here, maintain coordination among community partners. Um, so maybe we need to say that the normal lines of working with the Lyric City. Um, to find ways to promote this sort of thing. And one other thing I'm just thinking about that 
we do have Camp Bryson and the bicycle trails out there are some of the best in the state. And I don't even think it's going down that now. You can tell Wichita has almost no terrain. Wichita is flat. You've ridden the trail out there. And it's extremely difficult. Look at this. It is very, a lot of people from Wichita come down, but I think you could capitalize on that to an extent. And I know the city doesn't own that, but it is coal. A lot of terrain. Yeah, the coal wildlife part. San Francisco. Yeah. We the history of the state. Just, just because it's within the city doesn't mean we can't promote it as being an asset to the community because it is. Both of those things are called all by them. Okay. Um, There's a community not far from us in the south that is trying to um, consider, at least considering um, the tourism aspect of local wildlife um, fish getting a Yes, I didn't want to step on anybody there because okay. I'm having kind of a, a lag in conversations. But um, we also, I don't know if somebody's already said this, but I have because I can't hear very well. Um, but we do have Cali County at, at Quail Valley Farms. It's a huge Frisbee golf now. I don't know. You know, I, I, one of my classmates runs it, and so I had no idea that was going on there. But they entertain a lot of big tournaments, so there's there's a lot that we don't know about, and uh, you know, we we definitely need to get together with uh, or whoever visit Arc City or whomever. Um, you know. They should be doing all of that coverage and finding out what all they need to advertise for us. I think that um, we need to build up downtown and give give people a break in taxes there, you know, and I may have missed some of that conversation, too. But our downtown um, is is sad. And I know they're trying to do some Thursday night things, but um, I don't know what you said about fundraisers, but. You know, I don't know. I'm. I need to be. Maybe I can attend next month in person so I can hear better and catch up a little bit. Okay. Yeah. When I was talking about fundraisers, I was talking about Main Street, the Main Street organization. Right. Okay. Kind of flipping through this just to see what other cities have put in for them. <clears throat> Another issue where we're noticed about is uh, things online now. At that focus group, there's a lot of gentlemen talking about things, you know, how they grew up here and this and that. And I'm just trying to say, you know, 20 centuries over, the only thing you count on is change, the good or bad, it's come around the corner. And uh, I mean, a good example, I remember going to Gander Mountain, which is how anything you want outside was there. Way overpriced. You may go there, you look at it, try it on. Oh, I like this one. You go home, order it online, get it to you. That's why they filed chapter 11 and after search. They didn't get it. What can you do down here? Well, there's cities like this survive because everyone needed one of everything. Roads are bad, transportation is limited. The world grew up. Now, which ties, you know, in the back door. And what can you offer down here? Now, cost of building is. Worst it's ever been. Inflation up with eight and a half percent this year. Um, labor problems. Wow, what other ball of worms can you throw at this? I mean, but uh, you know, especially food shops. Over. 
people to weekend drives and certain shops. That, you know, they want that price, they want to really order that online a lot of people. But anyway, there's some ideas. You just gotta get collected on. I haven't heard anything this evening that I thought was a bad thing. <laughs> we, we, we haven't really need to uh, be promoting how amazing our little town is to people on the outside. There's a reason that everybody in this room lives in this community. So yeah, we have a reason. So you tell me all why I feel like you're here. And then to the point. We all talk about our community in some medium or another. And uh, I don't have high blood pressure, but if I did, it would be Facebook's fault. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's actually one of the poison pills for yeah. a while. So I'll just kind of talk about what is that, what I can put on these pictures. Um, at, at the meeting in April, last April or May or something like that, I can't remember which one it was. We did talk about um, a couple of these goals. That's how I could have made it. We talked about trying to uh, apply for those economic development grants. And at that meeting, Carrie, um, cautioned us on how we work that uh, because like i said economic development grants work a little bit different than say housing grants because off of the grant the grantee is the business and not the city and so it's actually the business that's applying that doesn't mean that we can't apply for other um, and if there's one good thing that came out of that it's all of these unusual funding streams that keep coming up and um, a lot of it was infrastructure related and, and just stuff related to the pandemic itself but as part of that process and even in the infrastructure bill there's stuff that is related to economic development as well um, to help promote um, different types of business we, we we were just talking about how people uh, go to a place, use Kendra Mount as an example. Uh, you go to the store to find what you want, but then you go on Amazon and find it cheaper. And that's the reality of our uh, marketplace today is that uh, our global businesses suffer because it's easy, it's easy to order it online. And so that means we have to be kind of creative um, as a city to figure out ways to help the businesses that we have to stay here. Uh, one of the things that I talked about a little bit when we were talking about land use was figuring out ways that we can get some of these slightly unusual uh, businesses to come in that don't quite fit our zoning regulations. Um, that can be something that we can use to encourage development is changing those. And one example I just throw out there is uh, like a, a small brewery. Uh, typically a brewery, uh, she's an example, uh, is an industrial use. But some of these small craft breweries that come into towns, they want to have their brewery with their bar or the restaurant. And the way most zoning ordinances are written today, including really ours, um, we can't allow that because we have no way to allow industrial uses in our commercial districts. So that's one little thing that we can do as a city. Um, and we'll be talking about that a little bit when we finish this planning, we ever finish this plan. Uh, ways that we can modify our regulations in order to encourage uh, in this case that can So it's changing what's allowed, where it's allowed. 
but just like any other land use thing, we just we just had a rezone hearing today. Um, you have to be careful because every change we make affects somebody else. And so I, I, I have a quick question. So on the attract new industries and businesses that come up with our company and utilize our labor force, what do you have a pre incubator program? Can you explain that to me? I think there kind of is one of those, but the, the idea of an incubator program is that the city would have a system, not necessarily the city itself, um, for small business owners, people that are wanting to start a new business. The incubator helps them. So if if they've never run a business before, they don't know how to do their payroll taxes, process, or they don't know how to develop a business plan in order to get, get their loans. Uh, an organization like an incubator helps uh, those individuals with the process. Because some people don't start a business ever because they can't figure out how to do it. But, and so the, that's the idea. Like, apparently we have something like that. I don't know if the chamber helps with that a little bit. Um, but if I didn't know that we had a, a kind of question, how many people actually understand that we have a program like that? And that's the thing <laughs> that we have people doing stuff in our community that we don't know about it. And if we don't know about it, then perhaps they aren't doing it. Um, an incubator would be, a, in my opinion, a good thing to do. Um, I mentioned at the meeting that we had um, last on Main Street. Um, I started on the board of directors of the Oklahoma Based Business Association, and I was um, worked in social services in a recession where no one was getting work, much like they weren't getting work because of the uh, pandemic. Um, and now we have an opportunity to uh, get people and hire themselves to work. And you do that, you're in essence going to have your own business. Well, how do you make it successful? Well, I've partnered with um, an economic development agency and my government agency, and we taught people how to start their own business. And the outcome of that was all of the customers except one started a business and ran it. The over half of the people uh, that started the business and ran it got off welfare because of the business that they ran. It. And the other half, except for the one that didn't start in the first place, managed to at least improve their uh, economic situation. So you can teach people how to do it. An incubator, for example, would, would uh, be a, a building perhaps uh, across the street and they come and they have kind of like a, a mall, they have a store at the building and they build their product at the building they sell their product from the building. The city doesn't charge them uh, what they what a building would cost to build. Let them, but after a time, they have to make a plan to move out of the building. That has to be solved. Taken. That's what an incubator does. Interesting. Yeah. Those programs aren't, aren't very well advertised. I was aware of them. Cali College offered that at one time. I'm not sure if that's still an ongoing thing that they do, but they did have that incubator program for new businesses and small business starting. One thing that, uh, as a former board of directors of the Home Based Business Association, encourage home-based businesses. We do that in our city better than some places. We 
we don't make it hard for someone to start a home based business. Keeping it going is hard, only in my opinion, because they don't know how to plan for future growth. Well, and, and there's and that's the problem with home based business. It's there's a certain threshold that you get to that it doesn't meet the regulations. Right. When you start having people double park in front of your house to buy a product, that's a problem. That's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when they call me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we should change that to promote our existing program if we have. I'll do some more data. Like we see if, if we I actually have one. Again, I, I don't know. I should know that. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me question how many other people. We also talked about um, working on rehabilitating some of those downtown buildings. Uh, it's something that we talked about when we did kind of meet last year. Uh, this is one building in the next five years. The good thing um, about our downtown is we, it's kind of been interesting the last several years, we had a lot of out of town owners, um, but it's been changing. Um, not, not necessarily. In town, but county to county, uh, several several people have been buying up properties that I don't live here, and so I think in the, in the long term that will change. Uh, so we have a little bit more control. We have people that own it that actually go to it every day, uh, which is a big deal. And with some of these buildings, is especially when they don't have a tenant, um, that they're still driving by it. So they can, at least then they can see it. Whereas somebody that uh, owns it lives across the country, they don't know where you are. And so we tell the city tells them. So I, I think we're headed in the right direction there. Um, obviously, we can't make people buy up buildings, <laughs> but I see that as a positive trend because if we have local owners, we we're more likely to be able to get fixed up. We also have had a number of people that have been fixing up some of these properties. Um, you probably have heard recently that Gordman's actually will be opening, not Gordman's. That building was was bought by you know, a local uh, person who will be opening to this area. So after that's been vacant for several uh, years, somebody's actually going to be going back in there. Um, it's a lot. One less. Very <laughs> uh, there's also a couple people that are working on housing on the second floor too. So there's some positive things going on. Uh, all we're going to do is keep working with our existing property to keep rehabilitating these buildings. But we can focus. We can still focus on uh, getting at least one per five year period. And uh, there was another goal in here to, or an action, sorry, to utilize the database of vacant commercial buildings. And again, I believe Cali first tracks that. That's it's kind of difficult for the city to track it. We have to use, but it's, it, it's easier for them to do it. And so, if somebody is keeping track of those buildings which are vacant. Well, first of all, it's easier to market them for, for people to, to actually come in and use them. Um, but it also gives the city a contact uh, in the case of uh, like a program or something like that. We, we have somebody that we actually go to um, to get that fixed. So I, I'm going to look into that some more too to see what they have uh, courage and calibers to continue that. Uh, good thing about that is it's not a big expenditure, so it's a pretty easy thing to do. Um, I think that last one is kind of talking about our partnerships again. Oh, with, I guess it's employment. 
So work with the, the school district to encourage businesses to go in to the schools. Uh, not every student wants to go to college and some don't have any business to go to college. And so if we have, we have these businesses that can employ high school graduates as opposed to somebody with a degree, let's get them in there. And uh, so these students know, hey, this is an option. This is a good paying job. <laughs> you can support a family out of it. We also, of course, have the college is a pretty good um, asset for us to have because of the vocational training. So if, if you don't want to do the traditional college course, they have the ability to give you certificates and stuff like industrial arts. So they teach you how to weld. Or uh, they're trying to develop uh, like a trade school sort of thing. So you can learn to be a plumber. Or, or an electrician or something along those lines, um, which is something we desperately need in this town. Uh, we, we have, I think, really about three electricians that regularly serve our community, which is not uh, We have a few more plumbers than that, but on a daily basis, uh, I hear from citizens that need plumbing work, for example, um, that they have difficulty getting somebody to work um, and it's because they're busy i mean you can probably attest to that <laughs> it's just there's a lot of work to be done and so it would help um, having a program like that to build up those industries and i think part of it too is also construction so you know if there was a staff on construction or statistics i can't remember which one it was Oh, yeah, cut in half from last year. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Kind of like 171. Yep. 371. I think it was on. Oh, yeah. I'm pulling on 4-6. That is a bit alarming. It got in, got, got in half. Oh. Yeah, encouraging those types of programs. Yeah. Well, the more you can diversify your employment base, the better too. So, like, I often worry about Wichita. What well, what would happen to Wichita if Spirit decided that they didn't want to be in Wichita? What would happen to our city? What would happen to our city? What would happen to our city, happen to our city if Spirit decided to come here? <laughs> That's that, that consideration that you yeah, it's not that they're trying to do that. <laughs> not that they're trying to do that, but we need to be we need to be prepared for that. Yeah. 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 Anything else? Any other discussion? Probably. Yeah, that's all I really have. What what I propose to do. Um, we didn't make a whole lot of modifications to this, but I'll bring this back just like I did with Halloween. Uh, which I have one last look at it um, before we consider it a final round sort of thing. And then I will move into discussion of parks and recreation. Uh, the beautification board tried to develop like a chart to when certain improvements should be made in parks. It, it's, very, it's a very early thing, but it's, it's kind of an interesting thing that I'll kind of bring, bring to you to see what, what they did. what they did when the board was going to each park. Uh, survey and uh, figure out what's, what's available in each park, what, what may need to be improved in each park, uh, maybe close the park, you know, that sort of stuff. That, that was all discussed. So we'll talk about that a little bit at the next meeting. Some of this happened after we had our meeting in our park. So that's part of my go back to that again. And some of these topics, as, as we know, our newest members weren't a part of the original session either. So we want to make sure that everybody has a chance to talk about each of these topics again. 
we're going to get through this plan. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm still hoping that we can have a public hearing towards the end of summer. Uh, and then what would happen after that, assuming that if you guys approved it, we would then take it to the city commission. And obviously, the city commission hasn't been involved in every discussion, and so I have to have a kind of a workshop or work session, whatever you want to call that, with them. We're all kind of at let them have a chance to provide some final input. And once, once we've done that, then we can move forward with having with asking them to adopt it. Uh, there's still a lot of work to do, but I'm hoping that we can get this all accomplished before the end of the year. Uh, it's doable. We've been working on this thing for two years, so I figured it. <laughs> we can move on to the chairman. Motion adjourned. Second. Meeting adjourned. Thank you.